charisma he's going to have, how that the whole world is going to follow after him. He's going to become wounded, but he's going to die and come back to life. And as a result, people are going to uh, pay great homage to him. They're going to think that he's the Christ. Um, he will have so much charisma that he's going to deceive them um, with a period known as false peace. It is that everybody will be thinking, this is it. The world now has eternal peace. But, of course, as the scriptures have pointed out, that will be a big deception as Jesus refers to him first as what kind of uh, Christ? False. A false Christ, uh, as well as and kind of false, 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 false prophets. They'll want to rise and show great signs, that is, miraculous signs. So it's, it's not difficult to perform a miraculous sign or do something miraculous because we see miracles every day uh, with the invention, inventions of of modern technologies, the inventions of, of modern automobiles, the, the continuous inventions of something that man, or advancement of something that man has uh, not seen before, to a level that man has not seen before, but it's going to increase. And at that time, uh, those who remain are going to be deceived, many of them are going to be deceived. What does it mean to be kind? What does it mean to deceive someone? Make them the boss. Uh, okay, uh, to, to, to lead them to believe something to be true when it's reality, it is false. Uh, uh, give an example. amount of dollars that you're going to be rewarded with X amount of dollars because um, it's like, you know, you paying them, yeah, you know, you paying them to, you are paying them because they are telling you that if you bless them, that you are going to be blessed, but in all reality, not everybody who's telling you that is really doing what God wants them to do. They're just making themselves rich. Okay, false prophets. Okay, so keep it. I mean, uh, sometimes people may come in the church and you may think like they're helping, but then sometimes people come to stir up, try to cause problems and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, like this person did here to like help the church grow, but sometimes they help destroy. Okay. Pretending to be Christians. From the standpoint of what Jesus was talking about, false prophets. 
just before we deal with the, the uh, Antichrist person, uh, you've, you've given an example of the false prophets. Uh, but what about examples of uh, cutting acts in the local church in bringing fast forward to the 21st century? Yes, sir. Um, I think um, some places uh, sort of accept like something that's not godly and such as um, accepting pastors who are homosexual and things like that. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else?
God is a deliverer. Oh, the Lord bless me with this. The Lord bless me with that. And all those things are good. That therefore the edification of, of the body of, of Christ. You know, sharing your blessings from the Lord with someone else. But the word of God is not designed to make us feel good. But the word of God is designed to make us right with God. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so, uh, so these are warnings that Jesus gave and Peter gave also to turn to 2 Peter chapter 2. among you, who privily shall bring in damnable curses, even denying the Lord, and bring among themselves with destruction. destruction. And many, and many shall follow their vicious ways, by the reasons of whom the way of truth shall be shall evil spoken, spoken of. Even the nine the master uh, brought, uh, brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Who is the master? The nine the master who brought them. Who is the master? Who died for our sins? Jesus. And bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Many will follow the sensuality, and because of them, the good truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, uh, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not <coughs> asleep. Verse 4 reads, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness, what are those angels called? Fallen angels. Okay. To be kept until judgment. He did not spare the ancient world, but uh, preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others, when he brought a flood, brought a flood upon the world of God. If by turning to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to uh, extension, making an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued righteous Lot, Greatly distressed by the central conduct of the wicked, for as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over them all his things that he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, and especially those who indulge in the lust of violent passion and despise. So God is a God of judgment. God is a God of punishment. God is a God of blessings. He is also a God of judgment and punishment. Let's read the uh, 
next paragraph on the material. We have already we have already had more than a few people who claim to be Jesus Christ in contemporary society. To Oregon, and while there he declared himself to be Jesus Christ. He also stated that Hitler was a great spiritual leader. David Koresh claimed he was Jesus as he married and molested 12 year old girls. And some of my own moon has also stated he is Jesus as he continued to exploit and deceive his devotees. Come to know him as moon. However, in reference to the scripture quoted above from Matthew 24 and 24, it is quite obvious that these frauds like the accompanying signs and wonders that were seen to verify their pronouncements. As a matter of fact, only those most lacking in spiritual discernment and who had opened themselves up to deception would be taken in by their absurd claims. So this is why we insist or why we beseech and beg and continue to uh, ask believers to come along or attend or participate in the Word of God, by us, the Word study, so that you are not in ignorance of the Word of God. Throughout the Bible, you find the clause of the statement, I will not have you to be what? Ignorant. Because my people do what for the lack of knowledge. God wants us to be informed of our life so that we'll be able to recognize the scheme of the life of the devil because they're going to come against you if they are not already coming against you. They're going to come against you. Um, so God wants you to be, wants your spiritual intellect to be of such status that we'll be able to recognize through the gift of discernment when you see the devil. Now, the devil does not show up looking like the devil. The Bible describes him um, as being an angel of light. He fashions himself as an angel of light. So the devil is not going to show up in your mind looking like a bomb. When you meet the devil, he's going to be groomed. He's going to be present himself uh, as he read in the beginning. Uh, to be true when he is actually false. So God doesn't want you to be ignorant. And whose fault is it when we are attacked by the devil and are on all the contenders? Next paragraph, nevertheless. Nevertheless, it is a certainty that the prophecy Jesus warned us with will eventually come to pass. And this, and this means, means that sometime, sometime in the future, there, there will be those, those who will claim to be Jesus Christ and who will perform astounding signs and wonders that will be so convincing they will have the potential to deceive even dedicated Christians. Moreover, the ultimate fulfillment of this prophecy will be the deception of Israel, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. One, one of whom will convince the Jews that he is their divine leader. Jesus alluded to this in the book of John when he told the Jews, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, then you will receive John, John 43. <laughs> How often have you heard of the congregation uh, elected a leader, and everybody's all hyped up about the new leader, uh, excluding Macedonia. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, after about a few months, you know, uh, all of the rumors change, all the fanfare change. Uh, people that were excited. No longer excited, people that were enjoyed, um, a faithful supporter of the new leader, uh, stood up and, and, and defended the new leader, but now they removed their membership. 
Uh, and that happens for one or two reasons. Either um, that new leader is not one that kisses up or does not do what he wants to do, or he is not, he is not set there by God. I was talking to uh, our pastor today who resigned from his church. And, um, and down the church, been down the leaders for almost, um, almost a year, and they don't really have enough money to, to give a salary to another pastor. And there are about eight or ten people left, and, and two people going to vote out two of those. Yes. Yes, ma'am. How can one person in the church uh, tell the pastor that he has to go? Well, based on the word of God, uh, no one person actually wants to do so. Now, in what we call the autonomous church, that is, the people have power if the leader uh, is not lined up with the word of God, is not leading by the word of God, then that body has the right to act for recognition. Sometimes a man is asked, or a woman is asked to leave when he was doing the right, because sometimes people don't fall. Amen. I got one thing you said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. friend of mine, uh, this church has had, <laughs> I guess, Four and they have not lasted very long. Right. And I told her, I said, there's just no God in that church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or there are very few people who know the Lord but will not stand up. Okay. It is that, it is that um, wrong to know what to do and not do anything as it is to fight against the machine. They just won't stand up to Right. So, uh, and, and that we go and be here for weeks talking about how when the autonomous body came about, and by the way, it's not the people's fault that they were put in position. The word of God clearly spelled out who God left the responsibility of leadership, the leadership of the church, to or to whose hands Jesus left the leadership and the responsibility of the church um, with them. But leaders, spiritual leaders, uh, centuries ago, decided let's form an autonomous body and let's give, let's shift the